Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SKB. We're kicking. Just kick it. Just kick it. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of... Why are you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can-can and a can-can, a can-can, a can-can, and a wheel. Now we're off to... Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming back to the channel, Dale Chanel's 48th World. We're going to get into the episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, Season 14, Episode 10. Guess who's coming to Blue Ridge, okay? <laughs> Woo! Now, the first scene takes off when Candy and Kenya are talking about Marlo and the boys and what had transpired of her putting getting them put out her house and she's sending them over to her sister's house her little sister crystal's house they're on a play date um blaze is playing with um um brooklyn Brookie, brooklyn kenya's daughter and uh, i forgot she came down and told her mother something meaning brooklyn to kenya and then she went back so <laughs> I don't know what uh baby blaze was doing up there seemed like she was trying to come down off the little uh slide thing they were on <coughs> but maybe brookie was telling her that you know baby blaze don't want to be over there no more i don't know this is little little baby talk here and there and so you know of course kenya didn't really want to hear too much about it she was saying well enough of that let's just go play with the kids and this and the third but Kenya was funny anyway last uh, episode because she was running around. Um, who house it was they had? The Sheree's house like it was hers. Like she had stole something. And, I mean, she was just really drunk as hell. And it was a cute scene because I never seen Kenya being that relaxed and stuff. So <laughs> Kenya said she was going home. So she went upstairs to, uh, to go home. And that was just, it was just funny. They were chasing Kenya around, Drew and uh, Sheree, until they got a chance to bring her back downstairs. Like I said, it was a funny scene. But um, Kenya didn't really want to talk too much about that night and how uh, Marlo was being very disrespectful. Then we have a scene where Candy calls Marlo and tell her that Kenya says she's not coming to, on the trip because uh, she don't want to or whatever. And Marlo pretty much told Candy she don't care. <laughs> she don't care if she comes. She don't want to come. She don't have to come. I'm like, okay. Then Marlo talks to Crystal, her sister, about the boys. And what they did to her that made her want to get rid of them for a month or so. She said they never keep their room clean. She has come in here several times and cleaned up for them. But she's just tired. She don't want to do it no more. And she's showing Crystal where Michael had had a temper tantrum. And he put his fist through the little sheetrock wall. And she's just tired of that. And Marlo told Crystal, I'm going to turn their phones off. So they're not, they're not going to have phones for a month as well. And I'm like, now you pushing it, Marlo. Because if they need something or they're in school and something happens, wouldn't you want them to have their cell phone? But this is, is what it is. Marlo is just wanting to drum up more drama, I believe. Between her and her situation, her storyline, and she wants to poke the bear at Kenya here and there, and she wants to poke the back at Candy here and there. Okay, and that's pretty much all that she does. And if anybody's interested, I did do a uh, Merit to Medicine review, so y'all should go over there and check that one out that's going to be released. But, child, let me see, we had something funny where Marlo had rented a, a nice car, I think it was a Rolls Royce, uh, for her and Sheree and Kenya to ride in if she was going to show up but of course she didn't show up so um Sheree and Ken I'm not Sheree and Marlo rode together and Marlo were eating and now even though it was just fruit finger food 
she had, you know, uh, they were eating in their Rolls Royce. They didn't have no problem. Then Marlo told me she wanted to make a drink. He pulled over while she, she made a drink. And can, he, can they drink in there? He said, sure, go ahead. So they had a very professional man uh, driving Marlo and Sheree to Blue Ridge Mountain. But the car that they had reserved for, Let me see, Candy and Charade, I'm sorry, Candy and Moneta and Drusadora. This lady talking about they can't eat in the car. <laughs> Candy said, what the hell are you talking about? We can't eat in the car. I'm like, oh, no. No, I wonder do I still have that play thing. Oh, Candy was too fit to be tired. She was hungry. And Marlo had ordered them some food from the OLG, uh, some wings and whatnot. And Candy and Drusilla, they were ready to get going. But this is what Candace yeah, said. Yeah, not about this car. If I can't eat, I don't want to ride in it. This is starting off bad already. Yeah. Oh, who you telling? Oh, this food smells good. I'm so excited. Just like Marlo. Man. Just Just like she <laughs> she said Buschetto. We actually, we can't eat in the car. Oh, sorry. sorry. Y'all want to eat before we leave? Yeah, we'll be right back. I don't care nothing about this car. If I can't eat, I don't want to ride in it. This is starting off bad already. Yeah. And that was funny. Because Candy meant that thing. She had all her base involved. And her face was uh, agreeing with what was coming out of her mouth. Yes, yeah, you're going to feed Candy. Candy ain't going to starve for nobody. And if she has to go a little hungry, you can trust and believe she's not going to be a happy camper. She's going to be trying to find something in her pocketbook. Uh, you know, some miscellaneous snacks that she may have thrown in there. But she, mm -mm, Candy might be on a weight loss journey. But she was going to eat them wings that day. <laughs> trip me the hell out because that's how i am when i'm ready to eat i don't want if i have the ready to eat or i gotta use the bathroom i don't want nobody telling me nothing i don't want anyone really talking to me because i need to get down and do what i need to do and then we can have a conversation about it afterwards but candy was feeling there she said i i don't i don't want to ride in your car if i can't eat in your car <laughs> i said okay candy girl and <laughs> let's see okay so we had talked about the phone marlo was going to disconnect from the boys because she didn't like their attitude or whatnot um uh, charade actually shows up at blue ridge mountain because you know they get to the mountains both sets of women and they go on to uh look at the house and they wasn't expecting it to be that elaborate or that you know well kept and, and I, you know the thing was just beautiful and uh they should have known it was marlo she wouldn't come come half stepping so um they um like their dx that they would be spending a week or maybe a weekend at doing filming and you know just trying to bond with one another and um everybody seemed like they got a good room to tell you the truth but kenya was supposed to have been a part of that um uh, scenario as well but she did tell candy eventually that she was gonna come or she was gonna show up but uh they were playing some game of who uh who that she, she could describe that if anyone could s describe that particular person or figure out who that particular person she was trying to describe their behavior and their attitudes you get you know you get to go choose your room but like i said all the rooms were pretty nice really a nice size and it was livable you know for the time that they had to be down there taping and um they went they had you know first marlo told them to take a little wash up or whatnot and get refreshed before they go to dinner but it was taking them so long or maybe the uh filming guy had said no nah, y'all need to go and finish this scene so they pretty much had to come back to the center of the room and get ready to go eat dinner so when they got there to the dinner and stuff you know they were just having calm uh casual conversation and stuff of that nature and then kenya come calling candy pretty much telling her to meet her uh outside or whatnot and Candy just lied instead of her telling the truth. You know, Marlo's coming. I'm finna go meet her and bring her up here so she'll know exactly where we are. She went and said that she had to use the bathroom. I was like, Candy, see that's what I'm saying? 
you know, hold your shit in the water. If you got to say what you got to say, you ain't got to lie. Don't lie now. Don't come be a liar. But just you could just say, hey, uh, Ken- Kenya's here. I'm going to go get her and bring her to the table and, you know, let that have pretty much. So that's what she actually did. Brought her back and then her and Milo started having words. And they're just going back and forth, back and forth. You know, and Kenya was asking, can she talk? Can you please stop, you know, interrupting her? Let her finish her sentence, this, that, and the third. And, of course, Marla was saying the same. Then Marla just, you know, gave up and said, okay, if you are willing to hear what I have to say, if I'm going to be quiet while you take as much time to tell me, you know, what was going on between you and I, then, you know, I can do that for you. So, eventually, they did let, you know, they did squash their beef in a sense of letting one another talk for the entirety of the point that they was trying to make. Child, they ain't get nowhere with that situation. I know they weren't going to get nowhere with it. And uh, pretty much, um, Marlo said, well, you're either going to come and stay in the cabin or you're going to have to just go on home because... The cabin is for us to bond and for us to, you know, uh, work out some things with one another. It's not where you get to go choose your room outside of the the house that we're staying at. Just because you bought Bra- maybe Brooklyn. I'm sure Brooklyn came with a nanny. Meaning, you know, she could stay over there at that little dig you got up here. But you need to be in the house with us. Then Marlo had went as so far to say, well, you could bring Brooklyn. And, then, and the, um, what do you call it, the nanny? Mm-hmm. They can be in your room, and you can be out here with us taping, and, you know, we trying to work through some issues or whatever it was or have good times and good fun while they're up there in Blue Bridge. But Kenya said, I have to think about it. And when Kenya said that, she's pretty much like, I ain't coming. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. <coughs> My water went down the wrong way. <coughs> Excuse me. So, uh, basically what happened was, Kenya didn't like the ultimatum that she was making, but Marlo wasn't backing down either. And I'd be like, Kenya, okay, you done came this far to Blue Bridge Mountain. You might well go on and go over there and stay as well. So y'all can complete y'all taping and y'all can wrap this shit up. But uh, it was almost like a con- be continued type situation. But I really believe Kenya's going to have to, you know, buy out gracefully and go on and come stay with them in the uh, cabin. And just basically try to have fun. Because that's basically what they were there for. To have a relaxing time and to work out their issues if they could do that amicably. So, let me see what else we got. What else can they go to the restaurant? Okay. So, okay, and then Miss Sonia finally shows up. And that put a damper on Drew. Because Drew was being open and honest. And, you know, feeling everybody's vibe. And she was, you know, getting everything together. And she could talk freely. So, I can't say that going to all play out and go out the window when Sonia comes. <laughs> and sure enough, Sonia showed up. <coughs> and girl, Drew face just looked like it dropped. Like her, she gonna be like, oh, here we go again. And so Sonya was telling her, was well, telling the group that she had to go to L.A. or somewhere in Los Angeles and work out some um, fitness training uh, things she's doing. Her and her husband, and they liked it, and they're gonna be doing it in Jamaica. And <coughs> she wanted all the girls to participate and come along. And uh, the company was going to pay for it. I'm like, well, shit. Bro, I'm supposed to pay for their their trip. Two trips a year or one year. You know, one at least that season. But I guess they were like, okay. uh, No. They're going to have somebody else pay for it. And basically get free advertisement off the uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta. And their platform. Which will give them uh, a higher platform to be on if they're a little... You know, company that's trying to come up, so that would be a win-win situation. So, saying it was saying all of y'all invited, y'all can bring y'all significant other, and and we're gonna have a good time. And of course, you know, 
uh, everybody was pretty much liking it, except for kind of Drew. She was like being a little skeptical, but she's like, okay, free trip, I'm going. And, um, and that was pretty much it, because saying, like I said, saying had came at a latter part of the, um, showing of the, you know, seat, I mean, episode. So we didn't, she didn't really have nothing to say. Not really, because at the time, Drew and her are not fussing no more. It was her and, <laughs> Lord have mercy. Uh, what's her name? Uh, she's quit Keith Sweat's first wife, uh, Lisa Wu. So Lisa Wu didn't get a chance to really show us her uh, capability of coming back on the show, giving her us her impression of what if she's trying to bring back. So I don't know. Maybe they, it was like a pilot to see if she would blend with other women. I'm not really sure. But I'm like, you know, you could have gave Lisa a little bit more time to develop. We, we need to see Lisa a couple of more times and see can she get her second win back with coming back like Sheree. Because I'm telling you, well, her name Foon to me or uh, uh, Fatoon. <coughs> She might well take Sheree's place because Sh Sheree ain't got shit going on. She know the women because she's been hanging around them an extra amount of, you know, time. But she hasn't really given anything. And with her storyline with Tyrone, them pretty much vanished. Uh, I don't really think we really need her anymore in a sense because can be dropping bones here and there. You got Juice Door showing up with being us a little bone collector. So really it's like what can Sheree really give us? Her storyline just went up in flames when her so called jail bait uh boyfriend didn't want to see him. He was making all this noise out here talking about, you know, Bravo needs to stop using his name, his likeness, his you know, I'm like, okay, get it, got it good. We don't want to see your ass anyway. But uh we eventually will see him at least maybe a couple more times or maybe one time before she starts her fashion show. But like I said, uh, maybe they were trying to bring back some of the OGs in a friend type capacity. But it would still give them some shine. And we could see our old, you know, OGs uh, again, you know, just for a feel-good moment. But honey, child... <laughs> I want Lisa Wu back because she really wants to get into uh, Sonya's ass. You know what I'm saying? Between her and Drew getting on Sonya, I think we got a perfect match in heaven <laughs> of the storyline. But uh, I don't know. It was just like I said, it was very weird that uh, they brought Lisa Lisa Wu back. And then I was trying to figure out what what is wrong with her. She's not fat. Uh, but her face is so bloated, like she had work done to it, or she was like, you know, could have been seen as somebody who gained a whole hell of a lot of weight, but her, uh, middle section and her bottom section don't reflect that, so I'm thinking she had some work done that went very, very wrong, because she almost gave me a tease like little Kim, like, what is wrong with your face, you know, because she, you know, is a beautiful woman, she had all the... You know, the high cheekbones and all that. So, I don't know if she went too much to the plastic surgeon to alter her facial features or upgrade them and they just went wrong or what. But, um, it, it, I mean, it was just real, a, it was a hot mess. Just a hot mess, honey. But, pretty much, that was it for the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Um, as far as this take on it for this episode, for the season. So hopefully y'all like it, love it, and gotta have more. And I'll be back with, you know, more videos. You know that for certain. <laughs> what I'll be talking about, I would have no idea. But that's what we had. It was um, season 14, episode 10. Guess who's coming to Blue Ridge? And of course, you know it was none other than our fabulous Twirl, Twirl, Kenya Moore Hair Care. Okay? <laughs> And I'll see y'all next video. Bye-bye.